Hey, it's Didi from Healthy Hearing Loss. Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about the Echo Duo and my learning curve with it. As I've been using it out in the field, in the clinic, I wanted to just update you. And I had a lot of questions while I've been using it and I found some answers, but then I didn't find some answers as well. I'm gonna share all of that with you today in this video. I'm not a cardiologist, I'm a generalist. So with that being said, let's get on to the video. See you soon. Okay, so we're going to be talking about my learning curve with the Echo Duo. The other day, I went to a patient's home to do a house call after he was discharged from the hospital with, with atrial fibrillation. And I was doing a follow-up visit with him to make sure that he didn't go back into uh, arrhythmia. And I thought using the Duo would be really cool as an addition to listening to heart sounds as well as feeling for a radio pulse and comparing just to be sure he wasn't in a arrhythmia. So my learning curve started with this. The first thing is when you look at the duo, you have the button in the front to turn it on and you can go from different programs whether you hold this button or not for a little bit of time. And then it has volume on the side to listen. When you want to listen to the duo, I go through my Bluetooth hearing aid through my phone to the duo. So I'm able to use the duo alone like this. If you're somebody with mild hearing loss and you want to use it with the you know, earpiece, like a traditional earpiece that goes to your ears. You can do that as well and just hear the lung sounds, heart sounds, whatever, through the earpieces traditionally. That's the analog portion of it. But I'm not doing analog. I'm completely digital here. With that being said, the next thing I want to talk about is the back of a duo. It's really important to understand that this round piece in the middle, kind of a rubbery type of feeling to it, represents or mimics the diaphragm or the dial of the stethoscope. So just picture this round piece as the head of a stethoscope that has the diaphragm and the bell. Okay, that is the part that you listen into. The two silver parts in the top and the bottom here, those are electrodes, two of them. Now, I had originally thought that this only had one electrode, but it has two. And this is how you're going to capture ECG tracing. Okay, I didn't know that. Sort of, but not really. So what I did was when I went to go assess my patient's heart sounds and capture the ECG at the same time, I decided to use a conductive gel and I used an ultrasound gel that transmits sounds through the gel and it gets rid of any kind of air pockets within the skin. You can research that a little bit. So you can use ECG gel, ultrasound gel. It's pretty much the same thing that it creates that conduction. What I did was I put the gel on this part when I wanted to capture the ECG. It doesn't work very well. I went back and looked onto the Echo website and they suggest putting the gel on the patient first and then putting the electrodes on, which is these parts, not this. And of course, always cleaning before and after the duo and gel because you don't want it to cake up and whatever. So that's the first thing you need to know about the duo is that the middle piece is for listening and the two silver pads on each side are the electrode to capture the electrical activity happening in the heart. And that's another thing to understand is when you look at the echo, what are you trying to use it for? Are you doing it for lung sounds? then you would use this. It also takes that sound, that audio, and captures it on the Echo app. Okay, so it can do that. The other thing it does is it captures the heartbeat. So you listen to the heartbeat on here, and then to represent it in sort of a waveform, which we would call phonocardiogram, and that is captured on the Echo app as well. So you can listen and see at the same time and put those two together and kind of give you um, some data on top of your assessment 
to add to the whole clinical picture of your patient so you can come up with a diagnosis or at least know how to treat the patient appropriately. So put the gel on the silver part down here, not the middle part. Okay, that doesn't work very well. Then positioning the patient. My patient was sitting in a chair sort of upright and I put the echo onto the heart. And as I was trying to capture it, he started to lean back and I was struggling to keep that on his chest and then he leaned back. So make sure the patient is positioned comfortably and ready to receive the echo. Dual. Now, the other thing I want to mention is understanding the electrodes themselves. I had to ask the question, which one is positive and which one is negative? We're going to talk about the 12 lead EKG first. Knowing your electrodes and where they're placed on the body is important. When you have the electrodes, you have 10 electrodes. And the electrodes captures 12 different views of your heart. So different directions from in your heart. So that's why you have 12 leads on the EKG versus just 10. 10 is the amount of electrodes, but the actual view of a heart goes in 12 different directions. Now the reason I'm bringing up the 12 lead is because there are positive, negative, and when you have a positive and negative corresponding with each other, or you have that, that kind of conduction going back between the two, that is bipolar. So it's going from one to the other. When you have an electrode that's standing alone and it really doesn't need a reference, that's a unipolar. So it's only going in one direction, right? It's, it's going in direction, but it doesn't need a reference anywhere else. This is my understanding of it. So the reason why I wanted to ask the question as to which one is a positive negative because I have two leads and the way that you're capturing it and what is set on the echo website is to put the duo on the left side of the heart upward at a 35 degree angle so you have this when you look at this I don't know which one's positive and negative when it comes to the electrode itself but from what I understand and what I've done some research is that this represents lead two. So if this is lead two, this means that the top one going to the right arm is negative and the bottom electrode going down towards the left foot is positive. So that would be lead two. If I were to turn it this way, then I have a negative and positive, and that would be lead one. And then if I flip it this way, so I have the negative here, positive going down towards my right foot, that would be lead three. So I'm thinking that this is one, two, three, I guess. That's what I've come up with. Remember, when you're doing the duo, you're only capturing one rhythm. From what I can gather, you can't do a complete 12 lead with this, right? Because if this is a positive and a negative electrode, it will only capture bipolar, which is only the limb leads. I can't get the actual information on the website, Duo website or the Echo website. I can't find it in any videos that says for sure which one's positive or negative. But I have seen some doctors say that if you place it this way, it's a lead true, which then makes me think this is a negative and this is a positive. A little bit too much information, but when you place it the way that the Echo says to on your chest, that's lead two. Now historically lead two has been the best lead to look at when you want to look for arrhythmias. Back in the day they used to diagnose STEMI with this in the field and that way they can go right to the cath lab. That's all changing so I don't want to get into that but I wanted to just say that when you place it like this on your chest it's lead two. Now lead two does show the best P wave and the R to R interval. It's all upright and it's it usually comes out really nice and the reason that is the best lead from my research might be changing remember I'm not a cardiologist is because of the cardiac axis that's where the direction of all the electricity is going and that's why you can see it better on a graph with lead two is that it be able to tell you the rhythm whether it's regular irregular so forth and so on 
So you want to look for tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, bradycardia, that type of thing. If you know how to read EKGs, then you know what I'm talking about. If not, you're going to have to do some own research. It's a lot of studying because it takes practice and experience to be able to understand ECGs. Now, the 12 lead is much better because it gives you a full picture, right? It has different directions that is looking at the heart. So it goes beyond just reading a rhythm or arrhythmias. It goes beyond such that you can pick up hyperkalemia. You can pick up left hypertrophy, left bundle branch block, that type of thing. A cardiologist is really, really good at that. You know, um, as a generalist, I can read to a point. And when it gets to a point where I see something abnormal and I can't identify it, then I will send it to cardiology because we have the experts at it. Just wanted to point out when you're looking to use the duo you want to first ask yourself why are you using it probably going to be for auscultation listening to lung sounds and heart sounds but if you're going to listen to lung sounds know what you're looking for growls wheezes wrong eye then you want to know what those abnormal lung sounds represent and once you understand what growls wheezes and wrong eye is then you can add it to your clinical picture and come up with a plan of care for your patient and if you want to talk about about heart sounds, then you need to study up and understand what S1 is, what S2 is, which one means why, what happens when there's sound in between the two, what happens when there's sounds on either side of the two, murmurs, clicks, all those things, you need to study up on that as well. And then when it comes to EKG, obviously you need to know about the conductive system, the SA node, the AB junction, the big Kinji fibers, that type of thing, and understand how those represent on an actual ECG rhythm, like the P wave, the QRS, the T, and the U. So it's understanding all of those things on each category. So there's a lot more to just find the duo and hearing the lung sounds and be able to record it. There's a lot more studying, practice, knowledge all those things make up a picture so as much as I love this thing I have so much to learn about this thing and how I can use it in practice if I'm in the clinic I'm going to use a 12 lead EKG that's going to give me a full picture of the heart and I can refer to cardiology as necessary and they can diagnose right from EKG. If I'm out in the field and, you know, going to a house call or going into the street, I don't have a 12 lead EKG with me. I don't have a portable machine, not as of yet. This is really good for when you want to just get a, a capture of one to two to three leads and be able to just see if they have an arrhythmia and that is it. I do like the fact that I can listen to hot sounds and be able to hear murmurs and such anywhere. I can do it in the clinic or in the home or in the field. Listening to the lung sounds, I can do that anywhere. But as far as the ECG goes, it's I really only use it out in the field, in a house or in a tent or on the street, the side of the street. So it's really important to know why you're going to use the duo. It has a lot of functionality to it. It has audio. It can capture waveforms and EKGs. And listen to, you know, it's just, it's an amazing tool. But I think the first question to ask yourself is why are you going to use this thing before you buy it? And how is it going to help you paint a better picture of your patient so you can take the best care of them, right? Now, of course, when I was thinking about it, I'm like, okay, I'm going to send an email to Echo and ask questions because I have so many questions. I have some answers, but I don't have all the answers. And this is relatively new into the market even though they started making in like 2013 or something. It's, you know, I haven't seen a lot of people with this. I'm like the only one in my clinic that uses it. People don't even know what this is. So I'll do that. I'm going to go ahead and email and I will follow up again in a little while and let you know what they say about which one's positive and negative, which lead are they telling me to capture. You can place it on any part of the heart, right? So there's different leads here. Can I get more out of that? I don't know. All I know is I can do one, two, and three because I think there's a positive and a negative electrode on here. But I definitely would like to learn more. It's an amazing device and I want to use it to its fullest capability and I don't know how to use it. But I'm going to try to keep researching and find out more. That's it for the video. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I'll see you around. Take care.